The Rugby Report, Japan 2019 with Betfred. Hello and welcome to The Rugby Report, Japan 2019 with Betfred. My name is Nick Heath and um, I've been enjoying not having noodles for breakfast. Uh, my name's Tom May, I had a decent breakfast but I've been stuck in my room all day. <laughs> uh, and why is that? Because it's raining outside and because I've had so much stuff to do. Uh, all these teams are getting announced. Um, was it four teams today? Uh, there was four teams yesterday, and I've got loads yep. to do. So I've been working. Yeah, mate. And, and, and we're keep we're keeping you busy. I know it's not all glamour out there, is it? Certainly no, not. No. Um, we uh, also like to give a shout out to uh, our friends at Rugby United and to our friends at Fill Your Boots Rugby, uh, and of course to our friends at Betfred. The Rugby Report is sponsored by Betfred. Quarter final time in Japan. There are some belters this weekend with England against the old enemy Australia. Oh, the sweet, sweet memories of 2003. And the Irish against the Kiwis on Saturday morning. Ireland naming 12 players who beat New Zealand in Dublin last November. Just saying. Sunday has Wales against the extremely well-rested French and Japan looking to stun the world and also the Springboks. Betfred a double delight on all the quarterfinals. So back the correct first try scorer he sticks another over the line and you get double the odds 18s and over be gambleaware.org singles only maximum stake supply when the fun stops stop visit betfred.com for full t's and c's so great to be back with you uh, i think it's only been about a day for those of you who are on top of episode 11 and have given that a good listen for our uh, previews to england against australia and new zealand against ireland uh, tom may we're moving on to sunday's games wales against france japan against south africa uh, let's get straight to it um, looking at the team that warren gatland has named uh, for wales the same starting 15 that beat australia 29 points to 25 um, probably not many surprises there alan win jones getting his 141st cap. Um, he's now behind uh, Richie McCaw with 148 and Parise with just 142, one more than him. Um, Parise, who I'm, I'm reading rumours that he's now not retiring. Well, he's basically got, sure that's about. He got so hacked off, didn't he, by that game being cancelled. He wants to go out <laughs> yeah. with, with something being a bit, a bit about him, I think. <laughs> yeah. So maybe he'll just play a bit longer through the Six Nations and then have a bit of a walk around yeah. the wave. I know, yeah, it's a little bit... It is, it's a bit it weird. It's fairly obvious. Yeah, it is a bit weird. Um, Josh Adams is also named in that starting 15. He is the top try scorer. He's currently got five, along with uh, Matt Sushima. Um, so uh, if you are looking for a top try scorer, uh, then uh, Josh Adams could be worth a punt. How do you see this one, Tom? Uh, I am... Well, this I, team, I should say. I, I would say that this team is is ready and waiting. You know, they... I mean, their last game against Uruguay was ugly. I mean, their performance was horrendous. Mm. Now, granted, not many of these lads were playing. I think there's only four that were playing. Yeah. But the number of mistakes... I think Hadley Parks has made the most handling errors in the World Cup. Um, has he? Yeah. I mean, I think that might have something to do with him having a broken thumb or a broken hand or something. Um, which there can, is that, yes. Yeah. I mean, if you've broken your mitt, it's quite hard to pass properly. Um, but he's... Um, <laughs> He certainly, uh, his handling was terrible against the Uruguayans and, and there were so many mistakes. Um, will that affect the Welsh? Probably not. Um, and you'd have to think that that this is their opportunity. This is what Warren Gatlin has been building towards. And if they're ever going to do it, now's the time. Um, and if you well, look I at that the way squad, you say building towards, as if it... As if it's been happening over the, you know, however many years Gatlin's been there. It's all been coming down to this. Well, he got to the semi-final in 2011. Um, yeah. And and lost to the French. Um, that yeah, was Alan Wynne Jones, we, Jonathan Davis and George North were all in that game. So there's yeah, three and we all know what happened be, uh, in that game. Who playing it. Uh, well, we do, Mr Warburton. Yeah, so, look, I, I think this is their opportunity. I think their problem is this French bunch, they're... I mean, who knows what the hell is going to happen. Um, if you look at their team, the likes of Penno, Vakatawa, um, oh, I can't stand him, but Uge, um, Dupont and Nine, um, Maxime Medard, he actually played in that game in 2011. They have got some did, yeah. real quality players. And... If Just running through that, that starting 15, it's it's the 14 who beat Argentina. The only change is uh, Bernard Leroux coming in for Ituria uh, in the second row. Um, and that France front row, Poirot, Girardo and Slimani, 16th time together. Um, and uh, yeah, they're, they're going to be 
they're going to be keen. Interesting to see that Girardo's back. So I don't know whether his little spat with uh, with Brunel is over, given that, that Brunel had been favouring Camille Chat, yeah. I think, possibly because of some internal politics. I mean, if this lot, by any random you know, notion, strike hot, then Wales could be in trouble. Because, look, let's face it, they played some brilliant rugby in that first 40 minutes against Argentina. They've been absolutely Which guffed. is surely all They've Wales are worried about, since. isn't it? It's just like, yeah. this, this, this team are great for 40 minutes, so as long as we can weather that, yeah. then, then we'll be all right. Interesting, I've seen Brunel has, uh, Jacques Brunel has come out and uh, had a bit of a dig at Dan Bigger, um, who uh, has had a couple of concussions, and he said if he was our player, he would not be allowed to play. Um, oh, God, the French you know, can't has say it, has anything he gone through to do the right? That. I know. Has he gone through the right protocols? Was he assessed independently? Uh, so that's, uh, that's an interesting bit of shit to be throwing over the fence. From, what about, from what about that Florian Fritz incident? Hmm, now just the French. You just mm. be quite quiet. I think you probably yeah. had your incidents. And also, they sent a player home, what was it, two weeks ago, injured. Yeah, Ramos. Yeah, he played the next week at fullback for Toulouse. He wasn't injured. He did something to yeah. piss you off, Jack Brunel. So you can just pipe down. Keep, yeah. your, keep everything in your own house. <laughs> Hold on to your onions, mate, uh, and as many other racial stereotypes as we can possibly achieve. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's Parks and Davis starting together in the centre for the fourteenth time. While while Hadley Parks, um, you know, while his hands might be letting him down, Jonathan Davis, I think I've mentioned it a couple of times in the pod, has been, I think, just bubbling away nicely and uh, and is you know with that offload. Um, in, and the uh, don't forget the fence. That. No, it was the fend, wasn't it? It was the right hand fend, and then the out the back. It was offload. Fiji, yeah, wasn't it? It was something. Something pretty special. Yes, it was. Yeah, well remembered. Um, so yeah, he's uh, he's beginning to, to to fire nicely. Can you see? Can you see it going either way? Yeah, I think worryingly yeah. for worryingly for Wales. I think uh, look, if for them the wrong France turn up, i.e. the good one, then we're in for a great yeah. game um, on Sunday. Yeah. Um, you know, I I think I love watching Vakatawa play. He's one of my favourites. Um, yeah, I'm surprised uh, Rack has been dropped, um, but yeah, but Penno's always going to play, and they seem to love Uge, So for some reason, no, oh, they love Uge, don't yeah. they? Because probably, I mean, probably because the rest of the world hates him. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, but you know, I think there is the potential for this French team to to put some something of a performance together, which I think, you know, given I mean they've been so quiet since that game. Um, against England was was ca- I mean they could have gone home, who knows what they've been doing? Um, <laughs> they, you know, just yeah, been the dicking, have actually dicking popped, about somewhere. Back to yeah, yeah, popped back um, to France. <laughs> no, so, you know, who knows out, what they've yeah. been up to? So they may come back and be absolutely superly superhuman, but they might yeah. actually just com- been knobbing around in 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 Japan and come up and be absolutely awful again. So you know, let's wait yeah. and see. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that immensely. Um, then before we get into our second game, a reminder of what is on offer with Betfred. The Rugby Report Japan 2019 is sponsored by Betfred. Quarterfinal time and the specials from Betfred continue to roll in. England to win both halves, Australia to score the first try. Hopefully not. Maybe a successful drop goal in the New Zealand-Ireland game. All of those bets are available on the Betfred app or on the Betfred website. Whenever you bet on the action in Japan, Betfred. 18s and over, be gambleaware.org. Singles only, maximum stakes supply, limited availability. When the fun stops, stop. Visit betfred.com for full T's and C's. So before we get into Japan against South Africa, um, we really must mention, um, I know it seems like a bit of an age ago now, but uh, but Scotland against Japan. You were with a few of your, your broadcast buddies, I think, from what I could tell from, from your social. Um, I, I mean, we have to hand it to Japan. They have, they have ridden on the crest of that wave. They finished top of their pool with 19 points. They are... They are just sensational to watch. And frankly, I, I had a tear in my eye watching that game because I just, they were playing rugby like rugby should be played. It was that kind of feeling. It was just, you know, quick pace, quick passing, quick offloading uh, and giving everybody the chance to run into space. Uh, absolutely adored it. What about you? I thought it was brilliant. I mean, I was, we, we had a choice of either to try and get into Kumamoto town or hole up in, inside the stadium in, in Kumamoto with a, with a crate Heineken. Um, and and see what see what this game was all about. And fair play to Scotland. I mean, they made they made that game what what it was. You know, they they stuck mm. with Japan. They played exactly the type of rugby that Japan were playing. Um, 
it, it wouldn't have been that kind of game if it hadn't have been Scotland because they just want to play like that. They want to run. They want to. They want to take on yeah. uh, the teams that that they're playing against. You know, they're running from their own twenty-two themselves. Um, yeah, it was unbelievable. I mean, some would watch. argue. Some would argue potentially suicidally, wouldn't they? I mean, is, yeah, is, but is I think there was a bit of that about the Japanese as well. You know, they're, they're, at times you're like you, you're sort of almost looking through the gap in between your fingers that you've got covering your eyes, thinking, "Oh God, what are you yeah. doing? Just shoo it downfield, man." Um, where, whereas they seem they seem to find ways to get round the problems that sometimes they create and create for themselves. Um, yeah, true. And they've got some great players, haven't they? I mean, Lafayette in the yeah. centre. W- wow. I mean, he is some player. Uh, Matsushima, um, Kenki Fukuoka, you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean he's that brilliant. guy's even giving rugby up. He, yeah, he's going to give it up. Yeah, oh, I want to do. I want to be a doctor now. All oh, right. Yeah. So you're just good at everything. Yeah, you take Nagari as well, scrum half who uh, who's just got a relentless engine, uh, and then of course that back row, Michael Leach and and Lavis Cagney and Jimeno. He was unreal. At the weekend, by the way. Yeah. Michael Leach. He was unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, looks well, looking at the, about uh, sixty years old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and he's going to be even more weathered after a go against uh, against, against the Springboks because uh, the team only shows one change to the Scotland clash. Yamanaka uh, is coming in at fifteen for Tupu, um, but as we mentioned, those names: Nagare, Tamura, Fukuoka, Lafaele, Leach, Labaskagli, they are all back in. Um, four of them started the win against South Africa in twenty fifteen. Um, looking at the box lineup, it's the same starting fifteen and replacements. The full twenty three that faced Italy uh, it, uh, it is the third time now this I think is a, is a key detail we'll discuss this in a moment third time in 24 matches that Razi Erasmus has gone with a 6-2 forwards back split on the bench um, now that says to me that South Africa are going to do their best to, to, to sit on Japan, use absolute brute strength. I can imagine that the Springboks are going to just carry their hearts out but not perhaps in that in that quick pacey running fashion that we've seen from Japan but just route one and try and steamroll them what, what yeah. do you expect in terms of the, how the two game plans might meet exactly that they'll just try and absolutely steamroll the Japanese I don't think the, the teams that the Japanese have played so far in this competition they haven't had the physicality that will be coming from the Springboks um, yeah I think I think the likes of Vermeulen, you know, the the big big carriers that we see time and time again for South Africa, that that's that's all they're going to be doing all day, and picking out mm. these these Japanese defenders and saying, right, look, if you can stop me, that's great. If you can't, I'm going to be on the front foot, and suddenly we're away. Um, if yeah. you look at this game, this game alone, you could probably at this moment in time say that there are the four of the best wingers in world rugby what, right now playing in this game. Chesney yeah, Colby, Mapimpi, Matsushima and Fukuoka. Now, both both teams yeah. will want to try and get the ball in those players' hands. Just because South Africa are direct doesn't mean they want to try and play with some width, but they, they almost earn that the old classic phrase of earn the right to go wide. They don't just lob it to yeah. Chesney and Colby and go, all right, mate, off you go, even though they probably could. Um, but, you know, they really try and get on the front foot because probably five or six yards close to the ruck is equivalent to 15 or 20 yards out wide. So, you yeah. know, I think um, I think if, if, if Japan can match that and there's a big, big reliance on the likes of Labish Gadney, Leach, Himeno, Eight, um, mm. you know, that if they can match it, then it's going to be incredible because they will still try and play that fast game and it's up to mm. it's up to whether the South Africans can try and compete with that. And I'm not sure Northern Hemisphere teams are as well equipped as perhaps Australia, New Zealand or South Africa are for a team that plays with that pace. So if if Japan mm. get through this one and they, they do another 2015, I think, I think Japan will get to the final. Well... Wow. You heard it here first. I've actually, I'm, I'm hearing more and more people saying, I think Japan are going to win the whole thing, uh, which, uh, which I love in, in pure romantic terms and, and sort of continuing the romantic notion. I mean, you talk about the wingers there. 
you sort of, uh, I mean, I don't imagine Rasmus is sitting there going, you know, we must do the game of rugby a good service here. Let's throw my game plan away. Let's, let, you know, let's follow what Japan are doing. But, but they're all, <clears throat> there almost is a kind of sense of, of feeling that teams are looking at what Japan are doing and just going, well, look, that's, that's how the game should be played. And, and I would love to see Japan still be able to do that. I, I think what's the key stat, I think, that will win this game, um, and it isn't always the one that does, I think could be possession because ultimately South Africa know that if they hand the ball over to Japan, they're in for a load of relentless phases of, of you know quick little buggers running about. Whereas if Japan gives South Africa the ball, they know that they're going to be in a boxing match for the next five, six minutes while they try and steamroll them. So I think I think whoever has the ball is going to want to hold on to it. Um, but as you say, South Africa are, are more of a traditional Southern Hemisphere side, a rugby championship side. They're probably more experienced at kicking to the corners and putting pressure on the set piece. Um, and uh, and it, there's going to be big questions over whether, whether Japan can, can play that running game from their own 22, I guess. Yeah, I think the two key men in that are clearly going to be Yu Tamura and, and um, Andre Pollard. You know, the, mm. I think the fact that, that Pollard has played against New Zealand, uh, Australia, the, the, the top nations in the world, more often than Tamura, I think that gives him an advantage because he's probably more experienced. I don't think I don't think um, Yu Tamura is, is lacking in skill or execution. It's just. It's just the amount, the amount of times that he's been put in those positions. Um, I just, I, I'm so excited to, to watch this game. If you're not a South African, you're supporting Japan, aren't you, basically? Um, yeah, and, well, they're, they're gonna, they, they know what it is to, to, to be England now. Anyone but South Africa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I th- do you know what? Look, there's, there's two games here that, that are really key, I think, in, in, this, in this sort of um, World Cup. If Ireland beat... New Zealand, I think that it just throws this thing wide open. And yeah. then, if this game goes the way of the Japanese, honestly, oh, wow. that is that is the scenario that you, you're looking at, and you go right, Japan are going to win it because I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I do not think that any of the Northern Hemisphere teams can compete with the pace that, that Japan play at. It's ridiculous. It's an extraordinary thing to be saying, isn't it? But but there is there's a there's a thread of truth in it, which is which is the absolute joy of it. Um, now, you know, when we turn around and and South Africa have beaten them by forty points to twelve, we'll all go think we got a bit carried away. But you cannot argue with it based on what we've seen uh, from the brave blossoms already. Um, and I know you know hanging around uh, Jacques Ferry while I, while I was working with the USA team, he was saying there is absolutely no chance um, that that you know Japan are going to do the business to us to us again. He of course won the Rugby World Cup in 2007. Joel Stransky said exactly the same thing. There you go. So there's there's an awful lot of uh, of I don't know. It's not quite cockiness, but they're they're determined not to be taught that lesson again. Um, but uh, yeah, there are there are probably plenty of the old guard uh, more anxious than they care to admit. Could one of those be former Springbok wing and fullback Tina Stelpot, who joins us now here on the Rugby Report podcast? Uh, Tina, thanks so much for your time. Um, like like Jacques Ferry, like Joel Stransky, um, are you convinced that Brighton 2015 won't be repeated as Tokyo 2019? Yes, Nick. Uh, it's not not that fond memories of uh, of Brighton. Thanks for uh, thanks for <laughs> reminding us all of that. Um, I'll probably say I'm 95% sure that um, that it won't happen again. I think the whole context of the game is different. Um, you know, in, 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 in 2015, it was the first game of the World Cup, an opening game. You know, Japan was an unknown quantity. They've had 18 months to prepare for that match. And, and South Africa, on the other hand, were looking at a bigger a bigger prize. There were some players not quite fit yet. Um, this time... However, it's playoff rugby, it's Rugby World Cup quarterfinals. Um, although South Africa had that initial loss to New Zealand, it's been a very strong campaign in the pool stages. And we now know what Japan can do. You know, they've, it's a wonderful surprise, um, you know, not just beating Scotland, but mainly, you know, one of the favourites uh, to win this World Cup, Ireland. Yeah. So Japan has certainly come out and, uh, you know, in, in, in hosting the Rugby World Cup in 2019, being able to go through to the quarterfinals is just a magnificent story, not just for Japan, but also for the Rugby World Cup. Yeah, I mean, as Tom's talking about, he's saying that if Japan can come away with the result this weekend, they could go on to win it. I mean, there are two contrasting game styles, as Tom and I have just discussed. There's there's, there's the nature of, of 
the the very quick pacey game that Japan are clearly trying to put on the park with their extreme fitness, having been together since February, I think it is, um, versus what we're expecting as a power game from the box. How do you see it playing out? Yeah, no, exactly as you described there. I, you know, if, if we reference the Scotland game, which was a must-win game for Scotland, I think they got drawn into trying to play an open game. We saw a couple of times Finn Russell um, restarting with quick throw-ins and, and trying to speed up the game. That is exactly what Japan wants. They want a quick game. They want chaos. They've got phenomenal wingers. I absolutely love their wingers, their pace, um, their work rate around the park. They come off the wing. They insert themselves um, in unexpected positions and and they really make an impact when scotland started with their comeback in the second half they reverted to a typical south african northern hemisphere england type of game where it's forward dominant big runners one-off runners um, just chipping away at that defensive line, slowly gaining momentum and getting over the gain line and eventually leading to scores. That's what South Africa needs to do. They need to slow the pace of the game down. They need to control that. They need to kick out. They need to force um, set phases, line out scrums um, and, and sort of strangle the way um, Japan plays. It is fantastic rugby to watch the way Japan plays, but this is knockout stages and, and you've got to stick to that plan which which brings you confidence as a team. And although I think Rossi has slightly developed the game a bit more, it is still very de- uh, dependent on a, on a strong forward pack. And you look at that the, the pack of forwards from South Africa, you know, these guys are, that's a world-class pack and hardly ever comes under pressure. Uh, I'm, I'm amused by what you're saying because there, there's that, and, and I don't necessarily disagree with it, but it is that sort of admission that, we're, in order to get past a team like Japan, you've got to suck the fun out of the sort of rugby that they're playing. Yeah, no, that, that's true, and unfortunately, you know, this is what this is what playoff rugby and a rugby World Cup, um, you know, brings on. You, you look at the All Blacks, the way the All Blacks play um, when it comes to playoff to the playoff stages of of all the rugby World Cup tournaments so far. Um, you know, they re- they've got a very strong defensive. Um, um, game. They've got a very strong defensive lineup. They do actually kick a lot. They kick very smartly, but they actually have a high percentage of kicks. They wait for the other team to make mistakes, and then they are the best in the world to capitalize on those mistakes. And mm. if you can't, if you don't make the mistakes, you can control the game. And and unfortunately for Japan, um, they they don't have that forward pack um, that com- can compete at a at a level par with your tier, your, your, your real top tier one nations. Yeah. Um, and hence they have to change the, the, the way they play against uh, these, these top nations. If you get drawn into the way they play, they will cause you problems and will turn you over. But if you can, if you can enforce your game, um, the pace of the game, then, then they will find it hard to turn it over. But the fact that we, the mere fact that we're talking about the potential of Japan is just, it's just fantastic for world rugby. You, you know, I think about '95 when, when Japan, New Zealand beat them 145-17, and you know, in a, in, a, in a two decades, they've turned the world rugby world around. You know, they, they now in the top ten regularly of the World Cup ranking uh, of the world rankings. They've gone through to a quarter final the first time ever, and if you think where they were. 10, 15, 20 years ago, it is, it's, it's a wonderful story. Yeah, it's magnificent, isn't it? Just a couple before you go then, you've, uh, you were obviously a back three player, uh, got the likes of Kenki Fukuoka, Matsushima for, for Japan, uh, Cheslin Colby, Willie LaRue, uh, Mapimpi as well for, for South Africa. I mean, it, we would love to see these guys getting ball in hand on Sunday, wouldn't we? No, of course. I mean, whenever one of these guys touch the ball, it, it lights up the atmosphere, it lights up the game. You think about Chesnan Colby and, and his impact he's had. Um, but it's about closing down the space um, for these guys. So I think from South Africa, you can expect a lot of high balls, contestable high balls to draw um, these wingers in so that they have, to, you know, they, they're going to be... Uh, forced to take the catches and, and be under pressure when they receive the ball. So they're going to try and squeeze the space and the time out for these guys. So if they do get the ball in a bit of space, um, I think it's going to be electric. They've shown both um, both sets of back three have shown this whole World Cup that um, if they do get a bit of space, if they have a small opportunity, they are going to cause, uh, cause problems for the opposition. All right, then. Final score, then? Final score. Um, I, 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 I think South Africa will be able to... Um, 
you know, to imprint their game plan. So I'm probably going to go about 30, in the mid, say mid 30s, 35, 15. 30, for South Africa. 35, 15. Aiming to crush Japan hearts, but that is, as you say, what uh, what Rugby World Cup rugby is all about. Tinas, we're grateful for your time. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Nick. Enjoy the weekend's rugby. Um, how do you see this one going then, Tom? I, I actually think that uh, my heart is saying Japan. My head is, is going. Of course it is. Come on. Just get a bit of realistic, you know, chat about you. Yeah. I think, I think if they can stop, if they can stop, I'll, I'll put it there. If they can stop South Africa, they'll win the whole thing. I'm just not sure whether they can. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Um, to uh, to round off then, any other business from your rainy day in uh Oh, it just, Japan? yeah, it's just a bit rubbish. Like, it's pissed it down all day. So I went to the gym and I dropped 15 yeah. kilo weight on my foot, which oh, wow. can hurt. Oh, my <laughs> God. But it made such a loud noise. I was like, oh, I'll just ride it out, ride it out, make it look cool. <laughs> and it was these sort of, these sort of, I don't know. People getting their beer credits in for the weekend, and they all sort of turn around, and look at me, and I sort of, they must have thought, oh, I wonder what that was, because that guy seems all right. In, inside, yeah. I was crying. It was unbelievable. Brilliant. Um, yeah, yeah there's not, not a huge amount that's been going on, to be honest, today. Very good. Well, uh, one thing that I should uh, I should draw our listeners' attention to, um, I saw that Rich Freeman, the uh, the eminent rugby uh, journalist who is based in Japan, uh, he was mentioning that four years ago we had four Southern Hemisphere semi-finalists. Uh, what price for four Northern Hemisphere semi-finalists? Um, so, uh, well, we spoke to the blokes at Betfred, they spoke to their traders, and they've come back. Apparently 50 to 1 is what you can get for four Northern Hemisphere sides in the semi-finals. No, not bad at all certainly uh, maybe worth a little thought or two uh, very very good well uh, listen we hope you've enjoyed our uh, our second pod in as many days just to help run through both of these semi these quarterfinals I should say uh, in as much detail as we possibly can we wanted to get the team news out there for you uh, Tom I'm going to ask you to stick your colours to the mast who are going to be our four semi-finalists England New mm-hmm. Zealand mm-hmm. Wales South mm-hmm. Africa There we go. Tom, thank you very much indeed. Enjoy your evening. Uh, Enjoy the weekend and the games. Uh, I know you will. Um, And, uh, yeah, if you, uh, again, if you want to try and catch up with Tom, then make sure you message him or message us on at the rugby report underscore A couple of people got in touch. Um, Oh, they have. Good. So I'll be catching up with maybe maybe one of them in a bit, actually. Um, Okay. well, uh, he was adamant he was going to buy me a beer. Brilliant. Well, uh, see if you can get some predictions from them. And then once we tune in next week, we can find out how terrible they were, Um, which uh, which is good. I like the fact we're encouraging people to get in touch uh, only to savage them immediately. Um, So uh, so good. Uh, Wonderful. Um, Well, uh, thank you to all of you for listening. And uh, we will be back next week. Enjoy the quarterfinals. Cheerio for now. This has been a Rugby Media production.